Welcome back to Resto Rat. We got Sam Wilson here today. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to get this uh, contrasting white on a tailgate. So stay tuned. Hey, before we get started today, please take a second to subscribe to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, well, you're freaking awesome. While you're at it, tap the bell. And that way you'll get a notification each time I post one of these exciting videos. And that way you'll never miss a new episode on this or any future builds. Finally, if you like the video or you learned something today, well, give it a thumbs up and drop me a comment in the comment section because you can imagine how much I like to read all those comments. And your likes and comments really do help me reach a, a broader audience. So with that, well, let's get started. This is the second one of these trucks that I've had the tailgate to paint and I've had a little bit of a conflict on whether or not the letters, uh, whether it's Chevrolet or GMC, should be painted a contrasted uh, white color or not. This particular truck is a placid blue with Dover white. And from all the research and people I can talk to, it seems like these trucks came with plain tailgates where it was all painted what I call the base color. And some where they had contrasting white uh, uh, detailing on it. I uh, can't really find any literature or anything that sorts out whether or not maybe this is a this is a deluxe truck, maybe deluxe trucks were painted solid, custom trucks were painted with the accent white. I don't know. And everything I can find seems to say that they came both ways. I found a, a new version um, where only the outline of the letters is done. And I'm sort of providing some uh, hillbilly justification logic that I think that possibly deluxe trucks, which were all one color or two-tone, came with the base color solid tailgate. Custom trucks had the white letters, and it, it appears that the dealers may have put on some outline pinstriping. So I suspect if you had a deluxe truck with a solid tailgate and you wanted the GMC outline, uh, some of these dealers would outline that GMC. So that's my logic, my logic. I'm not sure there's any research to back that up, but uh, that's what I'm gonna stick with. So today I'm gonna work on painting all the rest of these body uh, bed parts, but specifically this tailgate with uh, the white outline. So I'm gonna just walk you through how to do that. And the first thing is I'm using uh, 400 dry and I'm just sanding all of this. I used a uh, 2K high build primer yesterday and this is all virgin sheet metal so it's really flat. So it's pretty easy to sand. So I'm gonna get to sanding this uh, tailgate. I'm doing it with a block, uh, big and small, a big block and a little block. So I'm just doing everything with a block to get this smooth uh, as can be. As you stand this, you can see the, the top of the, of the uh, primer sealer build coat smoothing out. And it just takes a lot of patience and just do it gently because you really don't want to cut through the primer, particularly on these, on these ridges and curves. But I just go through it and, and uh, kind of patiently sand until I get this all done. On flat panels, I usually use a guide coat. I just spray some black paint on it and I use that to sand it down. But this has got so much intricacy and so much little spaces that I don't think it's warranted on this. But I'll keep sanding. Okay, it's taken me about an hour to sand both sides of this tailgate and I got it pretty much all sanded up, really focusing on all these little corners and trying to get everything, you know, where it's back smooth with no uh, orange peel in the primer. And kind of made me think of another issue that, that I've struggled with is there's all these little spot wells where they you know, fabricated all these body panels. And I've always been in a conflict on whether to fill those and make them smooth or leave them in. And um, I've kind of arrived that if it's an original truck that's gonna be an OEM factory, 
you know, trying to put it back like it came out of the factory, really ought to leave those in there. That that's the way they were in there from the factory and GM and Chevy didn't fill them and they ought to be there. However, on a resto mod where you're doing a lot of custom work and, and really trying to make, you know, things fit and well and do everything kind of perfect, I think those ought to be filled in. It's not really that big of a deal to fill them in. You just got to put a little bit of filler on them and, and sand them back down to raw metal and they go away. But, you know, it, but on this truck, it's an original equipment truck. We're trying to put it back the way it came. So short of fixing some of the body panel fit and finish gaps and stuff like that, just to make it a little cleaner, we've decided to leave these, uh, leave these uh, spot wells in the sheet metal. So the next step is I'm gonna clean this up, get all the dust out of it, wipe it down, <clears throat> and then shoot that base color on the GMC letters. I don't know if it's possible to see this, but there's just some little bitty gray shadows right in there. And that's what you gotta get out. If you use a guide coat, it's pretty easy because it just, the black is very evident. But with gray on gray, it's not as easy to see why you're sanding it. So that's what I'm trying to get smooth. So it's really, really slick when I put the base coat on it. Just thought I'd show what a guide coat looks like. I just lightly sprayed from about this far away, foot and a half away, black paint on here. And as I sand this, you can see where that, when that black starts to go away until there's no more black, then you know you got it black. So uh, I've got a kind of soft pad here that will contour a little bit to the curve. But you can see as I'm taking that away, it just gets, uh, all the gray goes away, and that's what we're after. So when you do that, you know you got it flat. I just, just about got, kind of gums up the paper, so you gotta use a lot of paper, but. But that's what I'm after. I'll keep sanding until I get all that off, but that's what you're doing with a guide coat. Okay, now I've got all these little gray spots sanded out of here, so I'm gonna just blow this off one last time. Get all the little dust bunnies off of it, and then this is a waxy greaser. So I'll just wipe it down one last time with this. And uh, I do use, when I get to this stage, I use surgical rags. You can buy these on Amazon. They're actually hospital grade surgical rags, and uh, they're good for this because they have uh, no dust in them. There's no lint, they're lint free. Uh, rags, so I think it's worthwhile to go ahead and get the uh, better rag. And I don't use them for shop towels, but they're kind of expensive. But I do, uh, I do use them for this, just so we make sure I keep all the lint off of it and all the little dust bunnies away. So um, I think this thing is ready to shoot this uh, Dover white. So I'm going to mix up a little Dover white, and I'm going to just put it in a uh, little touch-up gun because I don't need very much of it on here.
I think that'll come out pretty nice. I'm trying to make sure all my corners are nice and round and the edges are as close as possible to the tape line. So now we'll overcoat that with base coat, pull the tape up, and we'll have pinstripes. Okay, now I've sprayed this with base coat, and so the trick is now to just come in and gently lift this tape up so that it can dry and then I'll clear over the top. some reason, I don't know why, because it's in the middle of the tape, but um, I'll come back in and just touch that up just with a little bitty detail brush in the morning, and then we'll clear over the top, and there you have it. And this is the way I would do it if it was all solid as well. Base coat the whole thing with Dover, tape off all the white that I want GMC, paint blue, lift the tape up. I'll show you the clear. We're just taking the this edge. Eight hundred. This is eight hundred, and we're just taking just the just the edge off of that. Probably good. Now on the final step of this, so I've come in and I've sanded with 1500 uh, all this area uh, and I've paid special attention to just gently sand off the ridges of where the tape line was in here. So I've got it all sort of sanded down and then I've back taped this piece right here. So I've intentionally got this kind of roll edge along here so that I can, so I don't get a hard paint line and I've sanded everything with 1500. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna just flow coat over the top of this. I'm gonna put uh, kind of three coats, light coat, medium coat, heavy coat, just over this area. And then I'm gonna come back and do the whole thing. And then you'll be able to come in, sand off those paint lines, uh, buff it out, and you won't be able to feel the line where the, uh, where the stripes are. So I'm gonna mix up some clear and get going.
All right, here we go with a third coat right over this letter. set up for 15 minutes and then I'm going to come back and close coat the whole channel one maybe two more times. Alright this is all flowed out really nicely so I'm going to try to just put one last kind of flow coat over the whole panel. nicely. I'm going to pull this uh, back tape off and I should let that clear roll down that panel and uh, it seems to not have any trash in it so it looks good. I see one motherfucking moth flying around in here so I'm sure it'll find its home sooner or later. But uh, I think that's got it. And voila. There you have it. <clears throat> Came in the next day, pulled all the tape off of it. Looks really good. Um, when you feel here, you don't feel any kind of ridge or bump where there are paint lines. So I'll come back in here. I'll give it a four or five days to for the clear to harden up. But I'll come back in and, and uh, wet sand this with 1,500 and then 2,000. And then just do a light buff. I don't know if you can see. You're not going to be able to see it, but there's just a couple of little places where there was just a speck of dust. So I'll knock that dust out. But everything else on this thing looks really good, really smooth. And um, that's kind of how you do that. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, uh, please subscribe. Send me any comments. And uh, uh, let me know if you got some content you'd like to know. And maybe I can work it into a future video. So thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Download the RestoRat app today to begin managing, tracking, and documenting your restoration project.